I think it was the relationships I had with the older people that I knew. Uh, they were some of the most rewarding ones that I ever had. And I did a lot of work with kids, adolescents, college age students, but it was really the older adults that those relationships were the most rewarding and fulfilling. And I just couldn't keep away. I had to keep going back to those relationships that were most valuable to me. So that's how I got into that. I started out in graduate school knowing that I wanted to be a psychologist. So that's what I am, a psychologist by trade. Um, but I had no idea that I wanted to work with older adults. So when I started kind of testing the waters in different populations, I ended up in the Topeka VA. <laughs> And a lot of my clients were older male veterans, and it really started to ring true to me, this is what you're good at, this is what you like, this is what you wanna do. So I started pursuing a specialization in just aging populations, which was really key on my clinical internship and clinical postdocs. I just wanted to do what they call geropsychology, which is just a study of aging and psychology. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, so <laughs> there have been multiple times when I've had different possibilities in my career path, um, whether that would be a special fellowship or something I could have taken that wasn't really about aging, but that just didn't work for me. No matter what the possibility was, I always just gravitated towards that pathway, and I think once it really stuck that this is what I want to do and where I want to be, you just start seeking out those opportunities because you know that's what makes your heart sing, right? Like you want to wake up and do that every day. That's why you stay in the career. Um, not because the money's great or uh, because the benefits um, uh, are enticing, but because that's what makes things great. You know, that's why you wake up and go. <laughs> I think one of the things I learned early was that older adults don't have a voice. A lot of times in academic literature, in research, and in the world, and that really got me going because I'm, in a lot of ways in my life, I've been a champion of something. You know, I don't, I want the little guy to win. <laughs> and then I fight for the underdog. And that to me was older adults. When I learned that no one was paying attention to the issues that I felt were important to them, that's immediately what I knew I wanted to do. And that's what I love about my research is that I have a sticky note up in my office that says, are you making a difference today? And I know that this research makes a difference because no one else wants to do it. And no one else is working on this problem or they're a small group of us. And if we don't do it, then the voice is lost. So that's what I love. Sometimes I think that we and I as a researcher in the specific part of aging face some challenges in people listening. Because <laughs> if older adults don't have a voice and we're trying to advocate for them and do research for that, it becomes difficult to, for, for people who have the money to fund your studies or who think that it's important to do what you do and get, give you time for what you do to let you do it. So I think the challenges are just kind of advocating for people to do. Uh, advocating so that I can do what I need to. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of new things that are coming up in aging, and one of those is going to be how we can use and leverage technology to help address some of the issues of aging that we haven't been able to before, like aging in place. I think that's a huge uh, emerging field for folks to think about software engineers, mechanical engineers, business and entrepreneurship, and how you can capture a market that we've been ignoring. But there is a huge <clears throat> kind of burgeoning field for entrepreneurship and aging to be able to leverage some of the things that we're learning about technology and um, inventions that come up that we can make aging much better. I would think one of the main things to do would be to go get some intergenerational experiences. And what that means is go out and find some older adults in the community in different spots, whether it's at a nursing facility, a nursing home facility, or it's at the senior center, or it's at the mall um, on Sunday mornings doing your laps around, trying to get in your physical activity. Go and interact with older adults 
and figure out if that's a population that you like. What do you like about them? What's, what do you find challenging? How can you apply your own interests to that field? But go and interact with older adults. Intergenerational experiences have so many benefits, not just for you as an individual, but for other generations. That relationship pays off for you and the older adult and society. Um, so that would be one of the main things I would do. Another thing that you could consider is doing something like this, is finding someone in a profession that you're interested in, or maybe you don't know what you want to do, but find somebody who's doing work in aging and talk to them about why they do it, what they find rewarding, what were the challenges, and what they can recommend you do to follow up on this possibility.